Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar about Japan's first female prime minister. My name is Maya Matsuoka of Langley Esquire, and I would like to apologize to you for not having uh, Timothy Langley with us again, because uh, his voice uh, just uh, disappeared this morning and he asked me to step in. Apologies for this, and please bear with us. It is my pleasure to welcome Dan Harada of Nagata Cho Forum once again today, uh, when we'll be talking about uh, the factors that have um, eased the situation and let's say facilitated the situation uh, that allows us to be hopeful about Japan having the first female prime minister this year. Dan. Good morning, Maya. Thank you for everybody. And let me also apologize for Timothy not uh, joining us today. He has a voice problem. And uh, when you do not have a voice, it's difficult to be on a webinar. Maya, to you. Yes, thank you, Dan. So today, as I mentioned already, we are going to talk about uh, what uh, factors have facilitated the current situation when uh, we can think about uh, having a female prime minister here in Japan, something that has never happened before. But this year, actually, if that happens or if, uh, well, we can think about it, we have uh, three candidates uh, who have, um, well, all the qualifications uh, to step in and assume the position of uh, leader, uh, the leader of Japan. So before uh, we talk, we, we dive into this, I would like to say that, uh, as you already know, I believe that you have followed our previous webinars and also the sessions uh, that Timothy Langley and I have on Sunday morning uh, on Japanese politics, you know that uh, there have been quite a few problems uh, in the very uh, near past uh, with the LDP. So LDP went uh, through a um, political funds uh, scandal where um, many people were implicated. There were a lot of men who were implicated there. Some women were, uh, were uh, implicated as well. But uh, we also have uh, women who have stayed clean and uh, they have absolutely no stains on their resumes. Another thing is that with the previous... Uh, uh, presidential election within the LDP, the ele election of uh, LDP's president, we had two women uh, out of uh, the four candidates. And uh, back then, uh, Mr. Kishida won the election, so he became the president of uh, LDP. But this year, we have um, all the chances, and uh, actually the circumstances are pointing at uh, having a higher percentage of women uh, candidates uh, for uh, the presidential post of uh, the LDP. Dan, over to you. We have now three candidates that have uh, sort of, have two have officially announced that they would be a candidate. The third one has not. Now, the third one, Kamikawa-san, is the brainchild of Aso-san. And if you were told Kamikawa-san about two years ago that she would ever be a candidate for presidency of the party, she would have thought that you were insane. Aso-san brought her, her name in a, a political gathering just to annoy Prime Minister Kishida. Kamikawa-san is a member of the Kishida faction, and it's unheard of in the LDP's history that a member of a faction challenges he, his or her boss for the top job. Maya. Thank you very much, Dan. So that uh, you just uh, told us about Miss Kamikawa. Uh, I also mentioned that there are two other candidates uh, that we have uh, think about uh, who could, women who are actually qualified to become a president uh, of uh, the LDP and possibly a prime minister of Japan. And I think that uh, one of them is uh, Ms. Seiko Noda. So uh, could you please tell, her, tell us about uh, her a little bit? Yes, in the last round, so three years ago at the presidential election, she was a candidate. She did not perform all that well. To put numbers, she had less than 10% of the votes. That compares to 38% for uh, Kishida-san and 30% and for uh, Agaichi. san So she announced very early in the game that she would be a candidate. And, uh, well, that's uh, about it. She definitely uh, has a good background for it. Uh, the thing that she does not have is the followers. Now, whoever you are, you need 20 endorsements from the party to be a candidate. Uh, whether she does get the 20% is the first hurdle. 
thank you very much for that. And if you don't mind me also mentioning uh, the third candidate, who is Ms. Sanae Takaichi, uh, we know that she has been very active in politics. She was also supported by Mr. Abe uh, while he was still with us. So uh, would you please give us a little bit information about her as well? The last time uh, she ranked number two, she had 30% of the votes and Kishida San had 36%. Now, she very early uh, in the game announced that she would be a candidate again. Uh, she started a, a, a Benkyo Kai uh, in the latest days of last year. And she had at, the, at that time about 10 people. She had a, Benkyo, a, second round, a third round of Benkyo Kai yesterday. And yesterday she got 19 people. So that's near the threshold of the 30%, of the 30 names needed to be a candidate. She uh, got an increase yesterday because of the death of the factions. In the factions days, if you belong to faction A, you were prohibited from attending a meeting of faction B or a bank yokai of faction C or whatever. Now that the factions, except for Mr. Assos, has no longer exist, there is the freedom to go around from faction to faction. And yesterday, to prove the point, out of the 19 people that uh, came to the Benkyokai, there was one from former Abe faction and one from the former Motiki faction. So she, she did well last time. She probably should do even better this time because of the uh, abolition of the faction systems. If uh... You who are watching this uh, have followed uh, also the approval ratings of uh, the current cabinet and, uh, well, Mr. Kishida as a prime minister. You already are aware that uh, the disapproval rating is unfortunately 65% and only 21% of uh, people approve of his policies and uh, his actions in office. So uh, it looks like to me that uh, there is uh, there are very few things that the LDP and the cabinet in particular uh, can do to improve these approval ratings. And I wonder, is it actually um, shifting the focus to a female female leadership going to help, or is it the LDP's or the cabinet's way to try and improve their ratings? Dan, what are your thoughts on this? If you take the, the example of uh, Kamikawa San, she ranks among the potential candidates, she ranks next to Ishibasan. And she has about 10% of the people replying that they would like her to become the leader. But within the party, it's a completely different story. There is not all that much following. So I believe that to, to increase the popularity of Kishida-san, uh, you need some external factors and you need the Biden effect our prime minister will meet the American president in April and the ratings thereafter should definitely go up. Well, that might be the trigger for uh, a general election. And again, it brings into function if Mr. Kishida survives and is a candidate for the next time, then the concept of having a female prime minister looks a little far-fetched, but that is looking way into the future. For the time being, we have the three candidates, the three female candidates, which I met, or you and I mentioned earlier. Um, it is interesting you mentioned uh, Ms. Kamikawa, of course, because uh, we know that, uh, well, not she herself uh, has actually uh, voiced her willingness to become uh, a leader, but uh, that was mentioned by Mr. Asso. Uh, if I'm not mistaken about that. So, uh, and we know that there was a little bit of, um, let's say, uh, falling out there a couple of, uh, a month or a couple of months ago between Mr. Aso and Ms. Kamikawa. So uh, what are, uh, you know, the chances of Mr. Aso this time uh, handpicking her, uh, you know, to, to, to run for uh, the president of uh, the LDP and also uh, maybe for the leader, as a leader of uh, the country per se, because we also know that there was a kind of uh, disagreement between Mr. Aso and Mr. Kishida. So what is the dynamic there? All of a sudden, Kishida-san decided that he was uh, cancelling, he was terminating his faction, and that he was inviting the other leaders to do the same. But the point is that he did not consult with Mr. Aso before, and that created a rift between the two men. 
They spent two hours over dinner three days ago, but the rift still is there. And the concept of a, a, a Kamikawa candidacy is related because Aso-san brought her name up just to pull the leg of Kishida-san. Nothing further than that. We are now in February, and the election will be sometime in September. So there's a lot of time going on. Noda-san has officially announced the candidacy. <laughs> Takaichi-san is almost certain. Kamikawa-san has not said anything. Mm -hmm. Kamikawa-san candidacy is the brainchild of Aso-san. And it all depends whether uh, Kishida-san will be a candidate this fall. And if he is a candidate, then I would not put too much money on the concept of a Kamikawa candidacy. Japan is still, um, you know, uh, at the 126th position uh, when it comes to uh, gender gap. And uh, Japan still has to do a lot in order to close that gap, or at least to get a little bit uh, higher up in the ranking among the 135 countries that, uh, that are actually listed there. Um, I wonder whether there is, uh, you know, anything else that uh, Mr. Kishida or the government or uh, anybody else could do to actually increase the participation of women in politics and also to increase the number of um, leaders in uh, Japanese politics. Dan, do you have any thoughts on this? You, you have to find candidates. And until they are candidates, then it cannot improve the ratio of female to male in uh, on Nagatacho, it is low by other standards, the business standards, the academic standards, and whatnot. But uh, I think it's not very much uh, can be changed by that. And uh, I think it's it's a positive move that we may we may have three candidates and definitely have two candidates. It's a move in the right direction, but the climate, male female, on Nagatacho is not going to improve very substantially in the next years. It, it sounds to me that uh, we actually have to wait for one more generation, a uh, fresh generation, to join the Japanese politics before we can uh, increase the number of women and uh, actually enlarge the talent pool from which uh, we can uh, choose leaders there. But probably this is true in business as well. So um, how, at, at this point of time, you mentioned that, uh, well, we will have at least two candidates for the presidential post of the LDP, and probably three of them, uh, well, depending on what happens in April. But I have another question to you as well, and I know that it is a very delicate question. So is there a chance for a fourth candidate, female candidate, uh, for, um, let's say, the leader of uh, the LDP and possibly um, the leader of Japan per se? this year. There have been rumors that Governor Koike might resign the governorship and run in the, 20, in the April 28th election in the Tokyo number 15 district. But this was a rumor and I think it's a little too far-fetched. I think we, again, we, we probably will have definitely two female candidates Depending on what happens to Mr. Kishida, then we may have the Kamikawa uh, candidacy, but it's iffy. It depends on what the situation will be at the time of, or before the time of the election. We have to wait and see. And I have one more question to you, Dan. So what are the chances of uh, the remaining factions? We know that there are two remaining factions in the GLDP. Uh, one of them is uh, Mr. Aso's faction, and the other one is Mr. Motegi's faction. We know that uh, Mr. Motegi's faction is um, disintegrating at a relatively fast pace at this point of time, but uh, neither Mr. Aso nor Mr. Motegi have uh, said that they were going, uh, they would disband their factions. So my question to you is, uh, what are the chances of women becoming faction leaders in the LDP? Uh, they are not any greater than the chances of a woman becoming prime minister or, or leader of, of the LDP. I mean, uh, both uh, Sekos, uh, Noda san and Takaichi san are factionless. Okay? And the likelihood of uh, the, ten the tendency right now is to exit faction rather than the integrate faction. 
So I think the likelihood of uh, to, to reply to your question is, is absolutely zero. Well, although it is quite disappointing to hear, uh, I can see why it is really um, zero at this point of time. Maybe we will get a little bit higher, um, let's say, percentage uh, of uh, probability there uh, in a generation or two, if the factions remain at that point of time. But uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, at a, a different place, so even if uh, the factions are not called factions anymore, uh, those groupings uh, with the, within the LDP will probably still remain. And uh, I imagine that uh, the challenge here, the next challenge that uh, the LDP and, uh, well, not only the LDP, but the, polit uh, the Japanese political world, uh, is facing is uh, at the moment is uh, increasing the number of women in politics. So um, is there anything specific uh, that could be done on behalf of the political leaders at the moment to increase that number? No, it's, it's basically a, a private individual decision. I mean, there is nothing in the constitution that prevents a woman from being a candidate in any election. But if there are no volunteers, then the, uh, the, the numbers are not going to change very substantially. I mean, in, in the diet, we have less than 10% uh, female uh, representatives, and I do not see that number increase substantially in the next election or the elections even thereafter and the one after that. Uh, it tells us that uh, there are other... Uh, issues and challenges that needs to be uh, that needs to be addressed first uh, in society uh, in general. Well, so um, your final thoughts and the conclusion of having a female prime minister this year, Dan. The conclusion is categorically no. And no. Uh, I would like to add something different. That has nothing to do with women, but there are some rumors that there might be a meeting between the heads of Japan and the head of North Korea. And it will be the same thing as the Joe Biden effect to try to boost up the chances of uh, Mr. Kishida uh, in, in the future election. Well, probably Mr. Kishida will be once again, uh, or will, well, will get his next term as a prime minister. Is that uh, what you're implying at the moment? Well, kind of, but you have to see whether or not there is a general election before September. Mm -hmm. My answer is there most, most probably will be one. And depending upon the results, then Mr. Kishida would decide to go on or the party would decide to fire him. But until that point, big question mark. A big question mark. All right, so we're left with a big question mark, which also opens the door for another webinar, uh, maybe in a month or two. Uh, when I believe we will be talking about uh, uh, the upcoming election and also other happenings uh, and developments in Japanese politics with you. Uh, again, thank you very much, Dan, for uh, being with us today. To everybody who watched us uh, once again, please accept our apologies for Timothy Langley not being here with us today. So Dan Harada, uh, who is the CEO of Nagata Show Forum, uh, does his monthly meetings uh, every uh, beginning, every first week of uh, the month. So uh, we are going to have uh, the information about the next Nagata Show Forum shared with you as soon as we finish here on this screen. So please, if you haven't connected with Dan on LinkedIn, connect with him and also um, attend the Nagata Cho Forum as uh, he delivers uh, insights uh, directly from the heart of uh, the LDP. And also please join uh, Timothy Langley and my uh, Japanese politics one-on-one -on -one sessions every Sunday morning at age 20. There will be information about this as well. And if you have, uh, if you uh, really need uh, more information, insights about politics and also public policies here in Japan, uh, do not hesitate to contact Langley Esquire uh, we'll be happy to, to uh, help you with that. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thank you very much indeed. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you very much, everybody, for having listened. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Have a good day.